So I'd like to make this video a little nicer than my last one to explain MVC to you a bit better, uh, along with some descriptions and code that will better illustrate what I'm talking about. So let's start again with describing MVC, which is Model View Controller. As you are already aware, if you watched my other videos, the view is where we start our interaction with our application. And this triggers an action in the controller. The view, as an example, is, let's see, right here. This is an example of a view. It has buttons, text boxes, and if we look up an interpreter, it will render a list of them. So it's everything that you can see on the screen. And let's go back to our picture here. So the view interacts with the controller, triggers an action in the controller. The controller is a sort of gatekeeper for our application, decides what we can do and what we can't handles the business logic, it changes the model if we are allowed to proceed, um, so it's also responsible for handling our data. That's what changing the model means. So our models, right here model, is a container that nicely packages up our data and transports it between each layer. So let's look at our code and look at what you might see in the view. So here, let's go to our view. This is the interpreter list view. And I say list because the view that I showed you when you search for an interpreter, it will render a list of interpreters down here. So then if you remember the diagram I showed you before, everything starts at the view. And when you press a button or otherwise trigger some sort of action on the view, the controller is called. And our controller code would look something like this. Controller. Interpreter list controller. So then the controller calls the store on the client side, which you can see here. Interpreter store. And I have set a breakpoint in my code in the handler so that you can see as it stops between each layer on the client side or on the excuse me on the server side as we perform an action here on the view. So our action is going to be creating a new interpreter or inserting into our database. So creating a new record is another word for inserting. So let's do that. Let's run the code. It's going to reload the application. It's going to be the same thing you just saw. So we'll go to our interpreter view. Okay. So it already went through everything on the client side, the controller, and the store. And it's sent via an HTTP request to the handler from the store. And that's what you're seeing here, this job handler. So that's why the breakpoint stopped. So let's push this button and create and new interpreter. So last name, 
hello. And first name. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> All right. And now let's save this. Can't see the save button. Okay, so we're going to save this new interpreter. And of course, it did, it was already stopped at this breakpoint. So let's see how it might float through the layers. After coming from the store on the client side, then we are at the handler, which again is another name for the controller on the, the server side. It's always this ashx.cs type of file. And from the handler, of course, it calls the manager. So let's see if that's correct. User manager. So we should be, if I step through the code, should be going to user manager next. And yes, here we are in the user manager. And this is where the business logic would be performed if there were any. And then the, the manager calls the server side store. So we should be going to this user store next. Let's see. And here we are, the user store. This is the layer that talks to the database, the server side store. So it tells the database what we need. So as you can see here, it's creating this SQL string so that we can select from the table users table. But we are inserting actually because we are creating a new interpreter. So we are creating this SQL string. and telling the database to insert it. So we insert that information into the database. And then the whole process is reversed. Um, the database gives our data back to the server side store. And this store creates a collection of instantiated models or a list of our model class handed back to the manager, back to the handler, and in the handler, this is where our data is bound to our client-side model, which is our JavaScript model. And then the handler hands it back to the client-side store, back to the controller, and as the gatekeeper, the controller renders our request back onto the user interface. So in this case, when we say save, it'll just create a new interpreter for us. So if I step through my code, actually, let's get, let's get rid of the breakpoint first. And then I can show you that it actually inserted into the database. Whoops. Let's go back here and get rid of this. Let's see if it actually did it. If not, because I was stepping through stuff, I might have to actually do it again. Let's see. So the last name was hello, the first name was hi. So let's see if it's in there. And this searches by last name, first name. So hello, hi. Uh, let's just say hi. Hi, hello. No, let's do it again. New interpreter. 
Last name, hello. First name, hi. Record has been saved successfully. Now let's see. Hello, hi. There it is. Last name, hello. First name, hi. So we successfully inserted an interpreter into our database. And you saw how it goes through the layers during that process.